before my homily, I just want to say a couple words on Lenten appeal. And before I talk about that, I would just want to mention something. My brother, who was 14 years younger than me, helps out at the fish fry. He's always at the fry and the french fries. So if you want to meet Dan, he's back there with the french fryer. But, you know, Dan said to me two weeks ago, he said, you know, Ted, he said there's three generations working in the kitchen. And then last week I was looking at all the different, and he's right, there was three generations of family working right in the kitchen. And I was looking around last week and I saw how many couples that were there and family members and all these kids and I thought to myself, isn't it amazing? And then we were walking, he said, you know, those kids, and he was looking at all the, all these seventh and eighth graders and high school kids that were all there as well. He said, they will pass that on to their children. And he's right. What a life lesson you parents are teaching your children by working in that fish fry. Can you imagine having high school children on a Friday night there at fish fry? What a beautiful witness. It's a beautiful witness, my friends. And it's something they will carry on and pass that right down to their children. And it's the same last fall I talked about tithing. And many of you do that, and you've seen the rewards, and our numbers have been a lot better, so thank you for all that. But it's the same thing, my friends. My parents tithe, and I learned it. But when you tithe, you're teaching your children a lifelong lesson financial responsibility that they will carry for the rest of their life. Just like me. I learned financial responsibility because I watched my parents do it. It's those lifelong lessons that teach and impact your children when they're young and they carry it out for the rest of their life. It's beautiful lessons, my friends, so thank you for that. The Lenten Appeal, I think our assessment last year was $151,700. This year it's $152,000, so it's the same thing. And last year, we met our goal. So thank you, that's exciting. That's a great thing. So if you could just match what you gave last year, we'll be in great shape. We'll be in great shape. There'll be some guys in the back ne the next two weeks with your little pledge card, or you can drop your pledge card in the in the mail. You can drop it in the collection basket. Whatever you want to do, there's even you can even sign up on the diocesan website. I have no idea how to do that, but but, but you know there's a percentage of you that do that give the Latin appeal that way as well. So in any way that you do it, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. I've learned too, the longer the announcement that I make, the shorter the homily, right? I'll mix it, I, I, I get it, I get it. I'm aware of it, my friends. This is the only gospel where we see an angry Jesus. The only one. You have turned the church into a marketplace. And here we are selling eggs in the back there, right? Before you say something, let me explain what happened here. And you make a decision as to the, what he was talking about and what's going on back there is the same, okay? It may help you with that. Back then, they would offer sacrifices in the temple. So that's always an animal required for that. And some of them would travel distances, so they couldn't bring an animal, they would buy it there. And the people that would be selling those would be selling those animals at a much higher price than, the, than, the, than what they would get at the market. And on top of that, you can't exchange, the currency back then was the Roman coin. 
and they wouldn't allow the Roman coins to be used in the temple, so there was an exchange of money for the temple coin. And then there was a markup for that as well. And Jesus is saying, look, you're exploiting these people that are coming to church and taking advantage of them. You're taking something sacred and you're exploiting them. That's why he was furious and said, get out, get out. We won't exploit you for an egg, my friends. You want to buy an egg, you buy an egg. If not, don't buy it. But he's talking about taking advantage because this is sacred space, my friends. This is a very sacred space. I heard an article this past week on Chris Christopherson. I think he's a country music singer. I was corrected last night and told that he wasn't. I'm not sure what he is. I don't really listen to a whole lot to him, but the song that he sings, and I ask, I Google it. It's Lord Help Me. But it's a, it's a beautiful little song that he wrote there. And you know, he wrote that song and he was talking about it because they asked him why he wrote this song, Help Me Jesus. And um, he said he was on tour and one of the people he was on tour with went to church and said to him, why don't you come along? So he went and he said, I'm not a church goer. He's married three times and I don't know what his life was like. But he said he came to church and had a profound experience. And it wasn't a Catholic church, it was a Protestant church. Part of that experience was this, this very profound experience of forgiveness that he received. And then he comes out and he writes this song, Lord Help Me Jesus, and he's saying, I didn't deserve that, is really what the song is all about. He doesn't deserve that. But you know, this is sacred space, my friends, and this church can do so much for us. We receive the living God every week because we need him, because we need him. And it's the only place that we can receive him. And so this week, as we go through our third week of Lent, May we always value and treasure this great church and all it does and gives to us. God bless you.